Welcome to another edition of Lens Burning Bush. Before I bring on my guest for the week, I want to talk about what's really burning my bush. So apparently, not sure if you realize this, but the gas prices are up again. And they're high. Well, I mean, did you see this? Maybe the first 500 or 1,000 times uh, that it was posted on social media, et cetera. You may have missed it, so I want to make sure you understand it. A few weeks ago, I did an episode uh, on have you looked at the grocery store prices recently? And I mentioned that for some reason, people seem to overlook the other prices, but gas prices becomes a huge thing. Now, let me just put it out there that no one likes paying high prices at the gas pump because it, it does affect everything else like shipping costs, food costs, trucks, all of that. Uh, but whining about it on social media is not going to change a, a, a thing on it. You know, I saw a meme that said, I just got approved for a mortgage and I close next week on a tank of gas. So that's kind of funny, you know, pretty harsh out there. Or I've seen, uh, I told him to take me to someplace expensive and he took me to the gas station. The national gas prices are up. They're 436 a gallon, 469 for the middle grade, 496 for premium. And already they are over 513 for diesel. Um, so diesel, that should be the cheapest gas. Not really sure why that is so high. But if you really want to be upset, try living in California. Right now, the average regular gas is 573. The middle is 592. Premium is over 605 a gallon, and diesel is now 629. Uh, they've had some places that are over eight dollars a gallon in California. So some of the memes have been funny in a parody. He went to Jared for jewelry. Well, instead, it shows a man down on his knee. Uh, with a red gas can, and it says he went to Exxon. So funny there. Uh, one of my favorites, though, is wine is now cheaper than fuel, so drink, don't drive. That is probably one of the best uh, advice that we could give you here. Uh, also, you'll see more biking and motorcycles and electric cars. But, of course, those costs are probably going to go up, too, so you won't be immune to this. They will get you one way or another. Now, we know that things like this go up and down, and I do feel for the people who had to commu commute back and forth to work every day. But please, this, uh, as we know, too shall pass. And hopefully you won't need to get a mortgage for a tank of gas too long. With that being said, it's time to bring on my guest for the week. She is a former professional tennis player who is in the Ontario uh, Sports Hall of Fame. Please welcome for the first time to Lens Burning Bush, the very lovely Carlene Bassett Saguso. Carlene, how are you? And thank you for joining no, I'm fine. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, uh, the sports fan that you are, you're at a soccer game today, fitting us in. I, I really appreciate that. No, oh, no problem. Now, I just mentioned about the gas prices. I'm sure you've seen it. It's, you know, ridiculous. Everybody's up in arms about it, but there's really nothing we can do. Well, no, it is what it is. I mean, it's like anything in life. It's how you look at it. And then you have to deal with you know, it is. I mean, in a lot of ways, we should be going electric anyway. Um, yeah. And I think is a big push in that direction. Um, but, you know, I'm really lucky here in Delray. I just take the golf cart everywhere. I never use my car. <laughs> I actually I have to fill up my Suburban because we're big horse barn people. And it's $120 to fill that baby up. And I just said, no, nah, we're not doing the barn today. <laughs> Yeah, 120 bucks is a little bit much for that. So yeah. let's get into a little bit. Uh, obviously, you came on the tennis scene early on, uh, age of 15, I believe, uh, I which, mm -hmm. you know, amazing to uh, to do that. What You know, it, it's so tough for people, especially at that age, to play in the professional ranks. And you you really did a great job. I mean, you you got through um, in the Australian Open. You, you played Chris Everett, all of those things. But how did how did it how was it being a 15 year old on the on the tennis tour? Well, I actually was 13. Oh, by okay. early I was 13. I was a number one um, Canadian women's Canadian player at, at the age of 13. So uh, I was I've been you know I was always on the road even as a little girl. I mean, with my dad with all his um, entrepreneurial adventures in the sports worlds and football, hockey, etc. We were you know our whole life was it was like that. And so when I was sent away from home, just turning 11 and, you know, training six, seven hours a day and then tournaments every week. And I really never felt like the jump into the professional world was really that much bigger other than the fact I was playing, you know, older ladies. Yeah, it, 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 tremendous, uh, you know, on that. And, and, your, and your dad, uh, like John Bassett, owned the uh, Tampa Bay Bandits in the USFL. He had some work in the uh, WFL and certainly led you to play tennis. 
Yeah, well, he played Davis Cup himself for Canada, uh, and he played Davis Cup for squash also. And he was the youngest ever at, um, to be drafted to the Maple Leafs of goalie at 17. And his uh, father said, absolutely not. You're going to run the family business. Um, so he had the sports genes in from the get-go. We were always competing in our family. It didn't matter what we are doing. Motorbikes, you know, it's just it was – and it was one activity after another. Everything was always a competition. You had to be number one. Oh, God. Yeah. And I'm doing the same thing now. <laughs> what, are, what are you doing now? Uh, what am I doing now? Yeah. Say, what am I, um, well, right now I'm at the soccer game for my grandkids, and then my two kids played new. And um, and then uh, Lennon, this is like the one week she doesn't have travel soccer, but you know, I'll be doing travel games with her. And we were showing ponies last weekend because she's a jockey rider for my girlfriend's um, top 100 ponies in the country. So, you know, I, you know, I played like four single sets yesterday. I'm just, I'm on a soccer team. I'm on an adult soccer league. I, um, I'm doing real estate. I'm running, I'm kite surfing. I'm doing, I mean, I like, I, I almost died for two. Like if you would have seen me six months ago to now, you wouldn't even recognize me because wow. like, yeah, I, for two years I had a thing called anxiety death and, and I'm sure a lot of people who are watching have, have known someone who's had it and it's, it's the worst possible place anybody can, human can be in. And I mean, I went away four times last week uh, for treatment for it and nothing worked. I was treatment resistant to medication, et cetera. So I literally couldn't even exercise for 10 months. I couldn't leave the house. I mean, I was paranoid. Um, I could only think one thought. It was awful. I couldn't even touch my children. Um, and so when I went away, you know, they said, we don't know what to do with you. So I went back to my cannabis doctor because I've broken all my bones from the horses. And that when I, when I got depressed, the cannabis worked the opposite for me, the oils. I just do the oils. I don't smoke it. But um, so when I came out of treatment, I was going to put myself into the clinical trials for the psilocybin mushrooms because I'd been investing in those companies for two years. And so I followed all the trials and, you know, it's amazing. And so I decided to go that route within 24 hours. My life had changed. I'm, it cured my anorexia, it cured my alcoholism. It's cured my brain. I'm working for executive businesses at the highest level now. Um, different, different businesses that I've never been in. Um, I no longer wear glasses. I don't have my migraine headaches. And, and, you know, I almost actually two, two weeks ago, this Saturday, I was in an emergency room. I almost died. I didn't microdose for four days and I've had two concussions in the last three months and then they came back full blown. And so I, I literally thought I was done and literally, you know, my husband's like, what are you doing? Go back go take your shrooms. As soon as I did within like 10 minutes, I was feeling a lot better, but the pressure of the concussion was still there. But, um, but now I'm a hundred percent again. Awesome. So I, well, it, it lets me do everything. Like I put on 20 pounds. I, it, it's unbelievable. My skin it just, it, it, it's the greatest. I, I, I'm hoping everybody, you know, at some point incorporates it into their lives because six fifty percent of the CEOs I talk to microdose and they don't even have depression or anxiety. Which by the way, I have zero anxiety and zero stress now. And I live my whole life in a high level of anxiety and mania. Well, that, until that's, crash. Fan, that's fantastic. Uh, amazing. You know, you know, it's yeah. amazing. It's I, I recommend everybody on Netflix watch um, Fantastic Fungi. And it will just change your whole way of thinking about medicine and plants and, and everything. I mean, I was on medication for 30 years of my life. I mean, I have two sons who have horrible mental illness. Both of them are now microdosing. And it's night and day. And, um, and myself, I mean, I really should be the poster child because, it, it, I mean, my husband, he's like, he says, I've been waiting for this for 35 years, Carly. And he just can't believe a little dab of a mushroom three times a day on my fingertip is can do something like this change like everything about me now, now doctors couldn't figure anything out and and this helps uh and they couldn't figure oh, anything out before, China. Right? they only treat cancer with mushrooms right. Right. and and actually uh, md anderson out in houston which is the number one cancer hospital in the country now just incorporated a big uh, innovative alternative practice right next to their hospital which is um which is treating with the mushrooms. In fact, my husband's best friend's wife, nothing's worked here. She's going there to do the mushrooms right now. And I'm so happy. I mean, everybody I talk to, I'm like, just microdose, you know, and, and gradually, you know, like I started with the, the, the chocolate, which was, it's called the well-being, um, mushroom well-being. And that's the most common thing that you'll see. 
And then I went to Golden Teacher, which is one of the psilocybin. And then now I'm, 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 my, my perfect fit is the penis envy albino. I know it sounds crazy to get that <laughs> name, but if you, if you actually look at them, they look exactly like penises. Oh like, I know it's, it's a crazy, but it's, a, it's the, it's the, be, it's the most well-rounded shroom that just makes everything good. Cause I, hey. I live at extreme levels of adrenaline. I'm an adrenaline junkie and I've only known adrenaline. I've broken everything in my body. And so this just makes my adrenaline better to where it doesn't make me completely crazy. <laughs> well, that that's fantastic. It really is. Yeah. And, and so, you know, getting back to a little bit of, of the tennis stuff, you're just kind of going through, um, you know, what do you, is there anybody now that you look at going, I, I'd like to help them or, you know, cause you, the way you experienced it, it was, it was certainly. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm doing a, a blank on her name, but you know, the, the Hawaiian girl from Japan, um, Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. Sokka. Yeah, Sokka. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, someone like that. I mean, I can just see her spiraling. I mean, it's just a matter of you know she's young right now, but she has all the signs that that have where the anxiety. When once the anxiety starts taking care of you over your brain, it's just you're in a no-win situation. You you don't even have and you see it. And I I was in that situation, and you can't do anything about it. It's like being in that movie where he's hypnotized and he's like falling and you're grabbing and that's that's what it feels like and it's it's such a shame because it's such a simple thing to fix and she could get back into the you know the synopsis of thinking of, of winning again and playing again because once it takes hold of the negative default in your brain it's very very hard to to, to come back to something if you're not mentally like superior again now would you recommend like with with uh, you know parents today to have their their kids you know at a young age um, just continue to play sports throughout? Is it, a, it, it it's got a good mix, but to, to be that competitive. I, you know, it depends on, you know, you have to know your child. Like, I mean, I have my daughter, Lennon. I mean, she's like a bull. I mean, she's the best in her travel soccer team. She's the best at everything she does right now. You know, we're not at a high, high level yet, but yes, she's going to have to be physical. She's my child that I've got to keep her in sports because she wouldn't know what to do with herself if she wasn't. And then, you know, I have my younger one, who's my smartest of my kids. She's very analytical. You know, she's going to want to be more the animal one. Like she'll do the ponies and she'll do the, and she's a phenomenal soccer player too, but she's my, more of my academic. So would I do that to her? Absolutely not. You know, the first three, I, it was the Carlin show. I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I've made amends with my kids so many times because I just pushed them through my own ego. And um, that's why they had so much anxiety too. Um, so I think you just have to, if the child loves something, God, if they love anything, and I always say, hopefully it's something with movement, because you've got to keep your body moving, and then life's all about energy, and so then I'm all for it, go for it, and then I try to get involved with what they are doing, because when they see me doing it, they want to do it. Now, does does it help? I mean, the fact that your husband Robert Saguso uh, played the game. You you were you were all tennis. You you understood. Both of you understood it. Is does it does that help? You know, having a, a husband so, who went sure. through it as well. Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, we have such a great balance in that department because he's extremely detailed and anal he, he sees things way ahead. Where I just did like go hundred miles an hour and which it's a good fit because I'm, I'm the driver and the worker and he, he settles me back, tells me when to move forward. I mean, he really is the, he's the parent. It kind of directs me in which way to go with these girls, with our girls, because I'm with them 24 seven. And when I wasn't well for those two years, they went downhill like bad. And it's interesting to see how our children are just really many replicas of us. Oh, Sure. Sure. Now, one of the things of, of, of you know, going, growing up and, and being a little famous, you got to, you got to appear in a couple of uh, movies. Uh, did you like that? Uh, I love it. You, love it. I loved yeah, it. Spring yeah. Fever was a movie, uh, yeah. I believe, and The Littlest Hobo was what I had. Mm -hmm. So I did a bunch of commercials. I actually got an uh, Academy Award in Japan for Fuji Xerox. I was doing back layout flips coming off a trampoline, hitting balls in the air. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, hilarious. You got to YouTube it. It's really cute. Yeah, that that is that is awesome. Uh, I think that uh, you know, to, to movies and all kinds of stuff that we've got now, uh, it does it does help. Uh, you know, especially now with uh, everybody watching uh, streaming services as I well. Know. 
I know it's great. Yeah, I mean, it's it, so nice to have access to everything now because it's so much easier than before. Everything was, I mean, what you don't know, you don't know then, obviously. But having what we have now, it's like wow, it's amazing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, one of the things I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit is, you know, just some stuff uh, that you're doing. Uh, you, you, you mentioned horses. Uh, yep. That is a big deal for you right now. Yeah, I love the horses. Love, love, love them. Um, they saved my life. Like I would have to say the animal that really like because I struggle. I've struggled for 10 years. And when I found the horses, it, it really it prolonged me not to go down faster. Um, yeah, they're just a beautiful animal. I mean, everything about them. I could live in a barn. I, I love everything about the horse, though. I mean, we show at a very high level, um, which is great. But I, I, I much prefer being in the field, jumping over stuff like and just galloping and, and stuff like that. And I think it's such a great thing for children to be around, you know, yeah. I mean, they just, they, get, because they have to become smart because you're dealing with an animal and you know, being on one and just all the equipment and everything has to be so detailed and it's magnificent in the relationships you build. You, there's nothing like it. My daughter uh, rides horses as uh, he, she started, you know, younger, and now she's 18. She wants to get back in it again. And she's been able to uh, do it. She, she enjoys it a lot. And you're right. It's great therapy. Great. And, and she was not much, you know, in the sports, she did bowling. Um, she wasn't into it, but she did love the horses. And what's amazing. You know, my a lot of the riders don't do it. It's funny that you say yeah. that most of the riders are like that. Like, like uh, well, it's such an expensive, I mean, it's so expensive, the sport. I mean, you could do it at any level, obviously, but the level we're doing is ridiculous. And that's why it's great that my daughter's a jockey rider because I, I have to just pay fees and things like that. But, but most of these kids are, 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 definitely not athletic looking by any means yeah. when they're on, on the horse. But then again, these kids that are on under to $200,000 lease ponies that are just like getting on automatic. So they don't really have to have any much muscle, but you look at the jumpers, the, those girls are really fit. Yeah. It's uh, it's amazing. Like my daughter, you know, she's five foot nothing and she's going up against a big horse and she's picking, you know, kind of doing stuff. So it's kind of amazing how that yeah. is, uh, yeah. you know, it is, it is, it is, it is awesome to do that, but no, it's, it's tremendous stuff that you're doing. Uh, you know, we're so happy that you're around, uh, all the stuff that you've gone through. Uh, no, let's, I let's mean, hope. You have no idea. I mean, I'm so happy I made it through cause I was like this, if it weren't for my husband and my husband, it was awful. I lived away from home with like heroin addicts and just to stay away from the house. I wouldn't be around my kids. I mean, mind you here at Delray, it's nice, but still. I really fought hard. You know, I went back to Oregon's and I hadn't even had a drink in a month and this happened to me. It was, it, and so I, it, that was a scary, the scariest thing is when you're losing your mind, there's nothing more terrifying than that. Yeah, no. And I can see how Robin Williams committed suicide because he never got into the plants. He still was medicine, medicine. Like they tried everything with me and it only makes it worse when you're in this state. Well, we're glad everything is going well. Uh, do you, is any, you talked about one show on Netflix, anything with, uh, with the pandemic and everything that you've been watching or streaming? Oh God, I, watch everything. I watch everything. My favorite one so far has been the Vikings, the uh, analog. I think it's the one right after the Vikings. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I love Squid, Squid Game. Um, I love Yellowstone. Yes. Uh, oh, I love the one where she's a chess player. That was oh. phenomenal. Oh, and you know what's great is Yellow Jackets. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's on Showtime, right? The, that's, the... My, that's my second favorite, Yellow Jackets. Uh, Billions is a good one. Yeah. Succession. Oh, I love uh, Succession. That's one of my yeah. favorites. Yeah, it's, it's great, isn't it? I can't yeah. wait for the next season to come out. Um, you know what's really good is the Nicole Kidman one where she's in Costa Rica and she gives everybody the Oshawanda. Yeah. And, they, you know, it's all the, it's all the different couples. It's really yes. good. Yes. Something like eight friends. I, I don't know what it's called. It's it's really good. Um, God, there's so many good ones. Yeah, oh, I, I watched. Watch, okay. Which one do you watch? Well, I watched. Um, I, I like Ozark, uh, which is. Oh, I watched Ozark. Was, uh, great. Um, I've watched uh, Afterlife with Ricky Gervais. I, I enjoyed that. Oh, how's that? Fantastic. It's good. A, I it's, need it. Yeah. It, it's 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 one that will make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It'll it'll everything. It's got um, it's about a, a a man's wife that uh, has cancer and dies, but they they go through the way it, it works. It's uh, oh, it's wow. a tremendous okay. show. Oh, yeah, good. And, Rick, Rick, and it's funny too. Yeah, okay, it, good. 
it, it's Thanks. funny. Um, I, I watched a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of TV. Secession is one of my favorites though. Cause I, I, uh, I enjoy that a lot. It's, uh, well, it's I love like, finance and business. So it's like, and I understand everything they're talking about. So it's great. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I don't know if you follow any of this, uh, but Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson are together and I don't, oh, I, yeah. I, I have not been able to figure that out yet. Have you? I, I, you know what that whole kardashian thing is just so hilarious to me it's it's yeah. so hilariously off that it's entertaining you know it's just so wrong it's good yeah. you know i mean it, it, everything they do and you know what i it, it's it's so ridiculous i watch it no agreed you know? I, I think it's, I mean, it, those asses are just hilarious <laughs> i mean, exactly. god Kim, I mean, Kim's ass looks different. Every time you look at it, it looks different. I, I mean, I think she molds it or something. Even tell me she just dresses. She she does exactly. I I think you're 100 percent accurate on that. I don't I don't get it, but you know there there is another good show. I just realized that you know I wanted to mention to you, Better Call Saul. Uh, did you watch oh, the Breaking you, Bad trilogy? It, What's yeah, that watched, about? Uh, Better Call Saul is is basically the prequel to Breaking Bad. Um, oh. it, it is it is with Bob Odenkirk who on, who went through a lot recently, uh, had a heart attack, and now oh, is coming. He came back, and uh, so he's he's oh, definitely. Could I, that, that sounds amazing. I love Breaking Bad. Yeah, no, you'll like Better Call Saul. It's got a, a lot of good stuff in it, and it shows uh, how they get to Breaking Bad. And apparently, this last season is going to you know go exactly. Uh, they're going to do it where they're going to show it how Breaking Bad begins. So. Uh, I think oh, that's great. Good yeah, to know. Yeah. But there's about uh, six seasons you got to catch up on. Well, I'll do it. I, I mean, I, I go through binge periods. I like three days takes me to finish one. It, yeah, I, I I was talking about that last week. I did an episode about uh, they're they're starting different things. Like the marvelous Mrs. Maisel is yeah. adding. They're they're doing the shows like weekly, and they're trying to. And I don't like that. I want it all at once. I want to watch it. If I want to sit there the entire day and me watch too. it, then that's what I want to do. Uh, Me too. You know, to, I did an episode to binge or not to binge last week, and I I really like to uh, I like to binge. I'm a so, binger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right till you I'm, crash and burn. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong <laughs> You're with that? One eye open just to see. It, well, that's exactly what I kept saying. You know, it's just uh, crazy stuff. But <laughs> no, I think I, I think it's great. Uh, we got the Academy Awards are coming up. Uh, I don't know if you get excited over that. Uh, I love the Academy of, Awards. I know. Just, they're fantastic. You you mentioned uh, that you won an, a, a Japan a, a award, so yeah. that there you go. <laughs> Good well, stuff. Well, actually for Spring Fever, I was nominated for a yeah. genie. That's like our Academy oh. Award in Canada. Oh. And I watched oh. the girl in Quest of the Fire and never said a bloody word. Shook a, a stick back and forth like this. Now, speaking of being on, on a movie set, how how is that? I mean, as a as a tennis player, you're sitting there. You've got to be good for yourself. But with a movie, you've got to you've got to be good for everybody. How does that work? Yeah, you can you have a million takes if you want, though. So it's not like you know you're on the spot like what you do. Yeah. Or like you're live like an anchorman. So you know, that's yeah. that's pressure. I mean, it's just, it's easy. I mean, because oh. they do like like one. You only do three minutes of dialogue a day, which is like okay. two pages a day and then because they have to do each shot like you know every different angle up down all around i mean it's actually tediously boring in my opinion the acting part i like right. that like i love like writing i learned how to write the scripts i story to script i wrote for two years for films out of china um and then i really enjoy horror um and i like the research end of it when i, I was documenting horror so i was going to all these different like um places and it was really cool well, awesome. I, I, I think, you know, I, everybody's always like a frustrated singer or a frustrated actor. They always want to be on like, I, I yeah. always want, you know, a sitcom or something like that, but uh, it's not that easy to do. So, you know, you gotta, uh, but, but the extra takes will help uh, yeah. to get more than, more than just the other takes. Yeah. Well, is there anything that you want to promote? You mentioned about the, 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 the mushrooms, you mentioned about things. Is there anything that that's near well, and dear to your heart right I, now? I, yeah. I mean, if there's anything that my, pur my purpose in, in life right now is to share my story, obviously, because I should not be sitting here talking to you. And, you know, I, you know, my battle goes back to when I was seven, when I, you know, I was sexually molested, which I did not know until two years ago and to where it came to. And when that came to is when I went downhill really fast. So I think, What's so amazing with mental health now, with the pandemic has done and, and the seriousness of it is people are really seeing, everybody has something, but they're really seeing 
where they're falling. And and it's so open mental health now, which is fantastic because, I mean, nobody should ever be ashamed of it. You have to attack it. And um, and I don't think people judge very harshly anymore that and I think we're, we should open, be very, very open to plants. I mean, and, and I, up until like 1930, that's all they were using. And then obviously, they, I mean, it costs nothing to put a shroom in your mouth and you're, it cures everything. So obviously the big pharmas, they're going to shun everything they can and make it a controlled substance, which is retarded. When 50 percent of people that are dead were drunk and 50 percent of the people they kill are drunk. And then you go and you, you legalize something like that. I mean, it's just so wrong, but it's it's the only you know so what are they going to do they're going to shut down plants it's insane and yeah, no. uh, but it's becoming but the thing is is now it's so open news it's only a matter of time i mean just just google psilocybin or google mushrooms in the clinical trials you'd be just blown away it cures everything wow that that is amazing i i really you know don't even glasses anymore yeah well that would be great i mean all this yeah. stuff i mean yeah, we, we uh, you know, people go to doctors for a long time and they can't figure things out. You mentioned about, you know, Robin yeah. Williams and, and, and the suicide rate. And we need to figure something out because it's obviously yeah. been a huge problem. And, and Carly, thank you so much for coming on this. I really, oh, uh, I really, I really appreciate uh, you doing this today because I know you're you're uh, you're pretty busy. You can like Lens Burning Bush on Facebook at Lens Burning Bush. You can follow along at Lens Burning Bush on Twitter, the YouTube channel. Uh, you can stream uh, the YouTube channel also on Facebook Live and on Twitter. Listen on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Podbean, iHeartRadio. Tune in. You can even ask Alexa to play uh, Lens Burning Bush. So a special thank you, Carlene Bassett Seguso. Thank, thank you so you. much. And uh, it's been a it's been an ultimate pleasure to have you on today uh, as a kid. Last yeah. thing, you know, I wanted to mention to everybody. Oh, yeah. I've been married for thirty six years, and our marriage has never been better. Oh, that's than it awesome. Has been I started taking the shrooms because I was a bad blackout drunk for a lot of years, yelling at him and screaming. I train all day and do that. And, you know, he stuck it in there. And he, I, I, I can't, it, like, I cry like four times a day and think, and I see God in everything because I don't believe this is reality the way wow. I feel. That, and it's just, it's an amazing, amazing place. And I just want people to know there is hope because so many of us live with such darkness and we don't know how to get it, release it. And there's definitely hope. Well, thank you so much, uh, Carlene Bassett Seguso. We'll be back with another episode of Lens Burning Bush next week. So long. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. One second.